I've spent the last 15 years editing videos professionally. And when I had my production company job, we would often crank out 800 to 1000 commercials in a single year. So that experience, along with being a freelancer for the last eight years, has taught me a lot about being a video editor. And I wanted to share those lessons with you and hopefully in some way that that helps you to become a better video editor yourself. Thanks to Artlist for sponsoring this video. More about them later. Lesson number one is to edit in passes. And what I mean by this is to focus on one element of the video at a time. So for example, you'll start with the story and get that down, lock that story down, make sure that you're making sense from beginning to end. And once you have that, you can build on top of it, whether that's B-roll, graphics, music, sound design, all of that stuff, but do it in passes. So do your B-roll first from beginning to end, add your graphics from beginning to end, go back and add your sound effects. If you focus on one aspect at a time and you go all the way to the end with that one aspect, you are more in the, in the flow state and you focus more on that particular thing. What happens is you end up doing it faster and you end up with a better product in my experience. Lesson number two is to know your software in and out. Now I use Final Cut Pro, I've been using that since it was Final Cut Pro 7 and I've tried Premiere, I've dabbled in Resolve a little bit and they're not for me, but whatever editing software you use, make sure you try and learn as much about that software as possible because the more you know about your software, the more you're able to do in that software. If you know what your software is capable of, you know how far you can push the boundaries creatively and you'll also know where your limits are. And that's why it's important to constantly learn more about your software. It's actually how I learned a lot about editing as well, aside from learning from my colleagues at my production company job. But it's also why I started this YouTube channel. I wanted to share the tricks and share the tips that I've learned about Final Cut Pro over the years. And hopefully you find that helpful. By the way, if you're enjoying this kind of format where it's just me talking, us hanging out, then uh, let me know in the comments. I'd love to know if I should do more of these kind of videos in the future. Lesson number three is to watch your videos on a different device. This is a trick I learned at my production company job and because we would mix audio in the audio suite and edit the video in the video production suite, it often sounded very different. And we had to learn how to mix in such a way that it sounded good on any device. So let's say you edit videos and you're always using headphones, right? You're always mixing on the same thing. From time to time, go ahead and find another device to watch those videos back on. So transfer the videos to your phone, watch them on your TV, find someone else's computer and listen on their laptop speakers. Being able to hear your audio mix on a different device will make your mixes better. And the same goes for color grading. You want to make sure that your grade translates well to different devices because maybe your monitor isn't calibrated correctly or maybe you watch it on TV and you realize my grade is always dark. So those are the kind of things you would learn and look out for when watching your videos on different devices. Lesson number four is to learn J and L cuts. If you're not familiar with J and L cuts, a J cut is when the audio starts to play before the visual for that clip and an L cut is the opposite. When the video clip cuts to another clip, the audio from that previous clip continues to play. Now, why is this important? These kind of cuts make your edit flow a lot better. It also works really well with talking head footage like this, because every time there's a cut or a jump cut, you can just use a J cut that has maybe two frames of the audio coming in before the visual or before the jump cut. This really helps to smooth out these talking head type videos. It's really easy to do this in Final Cut Pro. You simply select the clip or clips where you want to have J cuts and you hit the shortcut Control S. That will temporarily separate the audio from the video. And then you can trim the video clip to make sure that the audio comes in a little bit earlier. Lesson number five is to invest in high quality assets. And by assets, I mean stock footage, graphics templates, music, sound effects, those kind of things. You're going to use them in pretty much every single video you make. And a mistake I made early on was trying to always find free resources for sound effects and for music. And they exist and some of them are pretty good, but there's also a lot of limitations to them. So for example, with music, you might not find the exact kind of music you're looking for, and you'll be settling for something that doesn't quite match the tone or the pace of your edit. For sound effects, there are loads of different places online to find them for free, but often they're not really good quality. So my advice would be to invest into these stock sites. So whether it's stock music, stock footage, stock sound effects, you're going to need them, you're going to use them quite often, and I've been using Artlist ever since I started my YouTube channel, and they're amazing. And what's even more amazing is they've just released their new voiceover feature, which is an AI text-to-speech generator. And I've got to say, it's fantastic. I've used AI text-to-speech generators in the past with mixed results. Some of them sound okay, some of them sound awful, but just listen to the difference. Here's an example from a company I won't name, but it's a well-known one, and listen to the sound of this AI voiceover. 
Welcome to the fascinating world of turtles, where ancient creatures glide through the depths with grace and resilience. You can clearly tell it's an AI voiceover, right? But now, have a listen to this one from Artlist. Welcome to the fascinating world of turtles, where ancient creatures glide through the depths with grace and resilience. In my opinion, if someone just played that to you and didn't tell you it was an AI-generated voiceover, you'd probably think it's a real person, right? I mean, I would. And what's amazing is they have a ton of different kinds of voices. Hey guys. So last night was a total disaster. Hey, kids. Summers are getting hotter, so let's stay cool and safe. The heat. Blooming. Captivating. They have multiple different plans with different budgets, whether you just want music and sound effects, or if you want music, sound effects, footage, and graphics templates as well. And the new voiceover feature is part of the max plan at no extra cost, but there is also a dedicated plan for just the voiceover feature. What I like about them is it's sort of a one-stop shop for all of those things. So go ahead and sign up with the link down below to get yourself two months for free when you sign up for an annual plan. Lesson number six is to use shortcuts. I've always been a shortcuts fan because it drastically speeds up your workflow. I've made two shortcuts videos on this channel. The first one was 41 Final Cut Pro shortcuts and the second one was 100 shortcuts. Now I'd highly recommend going to check out my 100 Final Cut Pro shortcuts video. You can also get yourself a free downloadable PDF to help you learn those shortcuts faster. If you're new to shortcuts, I'd highly recommend learning the tools first. So if you look at this drop down menu, you can see the shortcuts for all of these different tools. Being able to just swap from the select to the trim tool to the blade tool at the touch of a button as opposed to coming into this menu is really going to speed up your workflow. But also learn the other shortcuts that you'll use most often, like cutting a clip at the playhead, command B, or by trimming a clip start, option left bracket, or by trimming a clip end, option right bracket. Those are just a few examples, but there are loads more to learn in that video I just mentioned. Lesson number seven is to create presets and templates. As you edit more and more videos, you'll probably find that you start to redo the same things over and over, whether that's applying the same effects to clips or whether that's applying the same motion graphics and sound effects for certain things. So let's break this up into two parts, presets and templates. Let me give you an example of a good preset. In this studio, I record with the same camera settings every time, so I know I'm going to apply the same exact effects with the same settings every single time I shoot in this room. So here's a look at my effect stack, and then I can click on the Save Effects Preset button to save that preset to my effects browser. Then next time I record something, I can drop that clip into Final Cut, head over to my preset, and drag and drop it onto my clip, and now I have all of those effects stacked in the exact same way. And this is useful even if the shot is not exactly the same, because it's a good starting point. You can apply your preset and then just adjust the brightness or the saturation or whatever it is that you need accordingly. I also do presets for my audio because I record my audio in the exact same way every time. And then I can just drag and drop this preset onto my audio and I know I have the same consistent audio every time I shoot in this room. When you look at templates, you might find that you have a bunch of motion graphics and sound effects that you use often on a video. I like to save all of that in a separate timeline. And then I know when I start a new YouTube video to edit, I can just drag that timeline into the new library and I have access to all of those effects and I can just copy and paste them onto my new timeline. I don't only do this for my YouTube videos though, I do this for my client videos as well. And it's especially helpful with long-term clients who I work with on a regular basis because we reuse the same graphics, we reuse the same intros or title sequences, and I have all of those saved in a timeline that I can just copy from instead of having to recreate them from scratch. Lesson number eight is to pay close attention to your audio. Now, I touched on this in my recent sound design video, but most people will continue watching a video if the audio is good, but the visuals are average. But not many people will continue watching a video if the visuals are great, but the audio is average. And the reason I think that is, is because if the dialogue has a really nasty hum or hiss or noise on it, it's gonna be uncomfortable to listen to that for a long period of time. So don't neglect your audio. A lot of people focus on the visuals and the grade and does it look beautiful? And yes, that's important, but you've got to combine that with good audio. Lesson nine is about hourly versus fixed price jobs. If you're earning money from your videos, you'll probably find that there's one of two ways generally to earn money. It's either you're going to be paid by the hour or you're going to be paid a fixed price to do a certain amount of work. Now this could be a whole video on its own, but I'm going to quickly give you some of my thoughts. I think there's pros and cons to both. During the pandemic, I worked hourly for someone and that was great because I didn't have much else to do and they constantly sent work my way and the more I worked, the more I got paid. So that was great. The downside of that though, is if I was able to do something faster, I would get paid less. And that's one of the pros of a fixed price job. 
If you're getting paid a fixed amount of money, if you do that job in eight hours or four hours, you get paid the same. So you're almost incentivized to work more efficiently so that you can get more work and make more money. And this is great, but this is where one of the cons come in too, because sometimes clients don't understand how many changes they can request or make to a video. So it's important if you're going to bill clients on a fixed price, make sure that you have it stipulated in a contract how many reasonable revisions they can request. You don't want to be sitting there like I have with a client before on version 16 of a video on a fixed price job. Lesson number 10 is to do free work strategically. Now, usually I wouldn't advocate that someone goes ahead and works for free. Oftentimes that just results in you getting taken advantage of. But I do think there are times where working for free has its advantages. For example, if you're a new filmmaker or a new editor and you want to edit a certain type of video, it's great to offer your services for free for one video so that you have something to put on your portfolio that you can then use to reach out to other brands or other companies to get that kind of work. Another example, let's say you're really into cars and you want to make car videos, but you don't have any car videos on your portfolio to show to people to get paid for that work. Well, approach a company, approach someone with a really nice car, offer to do a video for free, and in exchange say that you want to use that on your portfolio. But I would personally only do that a handful of times to build up a portfolio until you have one or two or three videos in that niche, and then you can go ahead and try get paid work from those portfolio pieces. So in summary, I think strategic free work is good if it helps you achieve a certain goal. Lesson number 11 is to learn not to be precious about your edits. You've probably had this feeling, right? You've put an edit together, you've put tons of hours of work into it and you're really proud of how it turned out. And then you send it to the client and the client tears it apart and wants a thousand changes. And you disagree with those changes because you're so attached to that edit. It's like your baby. Now, I learned really early on when I had my production company job to not be precious about edits because there's generally two types of clients. One, a client that hires you to do the thing, to get the edit done, make it look the way they want it, and that's what they're paying you for. And I know when I'm dealing with clients like that, I'll often give my advice or say, I think this is better or I would recommend not doing the following. But if they insist, I go ahead and I make that change and I don't look back. The other type of client is someone that will generally hire you for your abilities or your artistic vision. And that's the kind of client you really want, to be honest. You want someone to hire you because they like your style, your look, the way you do things. That way you'll make less changes, but then also the client has trust in you because they've hired you to do what you do best. I've always had a mix of those kind of clients, clients that hire me to just do me and they're happy with what I send and there's generally no changes at all. And then I've also had those clients that come back and we do 15 versions of an edit. And with those kind of clients, I've learned not to be precious about my edits, not to be too attached. They're paying for a final product and they want it a certain way. They maybe have a certain vision that they haven't communicated clearly and they're figuring it out as they go, hence all the changes. But I've learned it's a lot less stressful for me to just make those changes and not be precious about those particular edits. And the final lesson, lesson 12, is to constantly improve by 1%. There are a few ways you can constantly improve by 1%. The first thing I'd suggest is once a week, maybe spend half an hour or an hour learning a new skill in your software or a new technique. Another way to constantly improve is to go back to previous edits, maybe something you did a month ago or two months ago, and have a look at that video with a more critical eye. Watch it back and look for mistakes, look for things that you think you could have done better. Identify a few things, make a list, and then on your next video, pick one thing and just get a little better at that one thing every time you make a video. Over time, those little incremental changes, those little 1% improvements are going to make a huge difference to the quality of your videos. I hope you enjoyed all of these lessons. These are some of the things I've learned over the years as a video editor. And I'm hoping that by sharing these experiences with you and these lessons with you, that you can shorten your learning curve and become a better editor faster than I did. And if you enjoyed this kind of video, if you want to see more of these hanging out, talking to the camera type videos like this, please let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next one.